She has shared her multiple talents with us today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, uh, also, Elaine is so generous here, yeah. sharing her house with us and, and we're going through. We rehearsed quite late yesterday. And although she was exhausted because she played a concert in the afternoon, she went out and she was buying refreshments at night. So, Elaine, thank you for your hospitality. Yes. Also, this is a very emotional experience because, you know, when you get together and make music with people you haven't seen for 50 years or 40 years. <laughs> anyway, I'll just speak briefly about the drums and we'll get on with it. Uh, in terms of methodology, there are probably two ways of writing music. Uh, you have somebody like Mozart or Bach who can compose something in their heads. Isn't that unbelievable? They write something in their mind, and then maybe a week or two weeks or when, maybe a month later they write it down. It's just uh, unbelievable. Uh, Brahms and Beethoven were not that type of composer. They labored over their works. Uh, Brahms, for example, and that's what we're going to play, Brahms would revise a work that he did many years earlier, maybe even in his youth, that he would revise it again. Anyway, he finally came to an age, it would have been probably in the uh, 1880s, where he decided um, he was going to go through all his papers and destroy all his works. Because what happened to Beethoven and Schubert is that people went through their drawers when they died and took all the music that they themselves, these composers, felt was were not, these compositions were not good enough to be published, and they published them. So Brahms thought to himself, I'm not going to let this happen to me. <laughs> and he decided when he came to Opus 111 that this was his last work. He's not going to write anymore. Well, he heard a marvelous clarinetist and he changed his mind, so he wrote another maybe 10 Opus numbers. And this the reason I tell you the numbers is that this sonata is opus 108. So this is at the very end of what he considered to be his creative life. And what's amazing to me, it's, it's full of romanticism, but at the same time it's full of passion, uh, youthful passion, even though he was already an older man. So uh, it has four movements. I, I, I guess you have it in the programs. I don't know whether you do or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. So without further ado, we, we will play it for you. I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. 